Hello everyone and welcome to this video of Warlords of Draenor UI Alpha updates. We are looking right now at the new group finder and you can see the dungeon finder, scenarios just as we'd expect, the raid finder, and then this lower down part called pre-made groups which unfortunately seems to be under construction. Moving over to PvP we've got casual which is everything you can earn honor points with, so random battlegrounds and skirmishes, as well as the battleground um, downvote system which we're all accustomed to seeing. Then we move into the rated section, we've got 10v10 rated battlegrounds, 2v2, 3v3 and 5v5 arenas, indicating a projected conquest cap as well as wins and losses. Going across into war games, we've got all of the usual war games and battlegrounds and then following into arenas, as well as the description below. Again, the pre-made group seems to not be working right now. This is a new pane here, now we've got challenges, so obviously Black Rock Spire, Shadow Power Monastery, Storm Stout, all of the ones that we're used to seeing that also indicate a challenge. Now obviously once we get down to here the UI is a little bit bugged right now, I'm assuming this is going to become a scrolling list and this also indicates the Valor Award that you can get for each thing. Clicking the leaderboard tries to send us to a web window so we're not going to do that right now. Alright, so now we're looking at the mount, pet and toy box frame. So the mount pane, nothing enormously exciting here. Obviously we can see that there are red glows around the things that we can't use in this area. For some reason some mounts have been mysteriously marked as underwater only, which probably shouldn't be, such as the Amadi Dragonhawk and various other mounts. Um, you can also see at the top right hand side there is a button to summon a random favourite mount. But unfortunately, as right-clicking causes us to mount, and left-clicking uh, just causes us to focus on the mount, I can't actually see at this exact moment how one sets up the favourite mount. It's possible that it's in another location, certainly not there, but for now we know that the summon random favourite mount is an available feature, so that's pretty cool. Going through the mounts, it all works exactly as you would expect. Moving into the pet section of the journal, we are again seeing very much exactly what we used to here. Unfortunately, this is a pre-made character, as only pre-made characters are available on the PTR at present. So there's only one pet that we even have available. But you can see that the usual uh, races of pet are marked here, and it's all very much as you would expect. Now the toy box is a completely new feature, so we're going to flip through these relatively slowly so that you can pause the video and scan through to see if specific items that you're looking for are included in there. There's obviously various different vanity items, items that summon, items that can be dropped, items with effects in here, as well as older items and newer ones, which we've seen from different expansions. These can also be filtered by source so that you can see things that you're missing, and it's generally a pretty great tool for collectors. Looking at the achievements pane now, we've got the new section called Legacy Achievements. Now this includes all of the challenge mode achievements from Mists of Pandaria, which for whatever reason are in there rather than in the Feats of Strength. Um, this is pretty cool, I think it's a nice way to store these older achievements which are still important to people. Now looking at the quest log you can see that this has been merged with the map, this is a pretty big redesign. And what's cool here is that when you move it greys out, which allows you to obviously view your character moving whilst you're going towards a quest objective with the map still open, or whilst you're just out in the world. When you stop moving the map comes back to be fully opaque again, but as soon as you start moving it fades out. I think this is a pretty cool feature, and obviously you've got the view all button there which allows you to zoom right the way out, and then you can zoom back in in the normal fashion. There is also the question mark at the bottom right of the map section there, which as we can see hides the quest information. And there's abandoned share and untrack, as well as the rewards for every, any given quest. Moving into the bags now, there is a new icon which you can see on this trash item, which is a gold coin. This basically means that the item is vendor trash and is an easy way for you to mark things. Now you can see that each bag also has a cogwheel on it which brings up this menu, allowing you to assign different things to different bags with the exception of the backpack. So you can assign a bag to be various different things, consumables, trade goods, junk, etc. Um, equipment as well, excuse me, and then that allows you to ignore the bag as well. We're presuming that there is some kind of bag sort system that's going to be coming in, but at the moment we can't quite get this to work. Nonetheless, this is a really encouraging feature for people who prefer to use the default bags rather than bag add-ons. 